big story out of Brazil, um, and that is a conflict between Brazil, Brazilian authorities, primarily a particular Brazilian Supreme Court judge, uh, and uh, Twitter uh, and X. I mean, basically, um, the, uh, the Supreme Court judge in Brazil has basically, over the last few weeks, uh, started restricting the ability uh, of certain voices to post on, on Twitter, on X. Uh, it has restricted opposition, has restricted speech, um, and uh, has basically made it almost impossible uh, for people to express themselves on Twitter. Uh, it, you know, uh, this is clear censorship committed by the Brazilian government, um, directly limiting the ability of X to do its job. Um, it, it, let me just see. Um, I mean, there's a there's a, a, a bunch of uh, a bunch of political opponents that have now been silenced, uh, and uh, this guy's a this guy's a judge. He's a Supreme Court judge. I mean, what do you do when the 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 judiciary is the one trying to silence everybody? It's the judiciary that is siding with the authoritarians. Um, and, um, and, and that's what's going on right now in Brazil. It is the uh, Justice Alexander de Moraes who is um, basically shutting down any kind of opposition voices, any political opponents, uh, specifically on, uh, on Twitter, I think in all social media. Um, and uh, what is happening is that, you know, Twitter is saying no. Uh, we are not going to take down these voices. We are not going to succumb to that. Um, you know, the, basically, uh, this judge has demanded that Twitter comply. Um, he, uh, he, he said he would basically arrest whoever worked for Twitter in Brazil. So Twitter fired everybody who worked for it in Brazil. So Twitter has no representative of the company in Brazil so that uh, this judge doesn't have anybody to arrest. Um, now the, the judge is saying, since you don't have anybody in Brazil, then you're not a legitimate company in Brazil and we're going to shut you down. So uh, Twitter will be shut down uh, probably today uh, in Brazil. Um, and... Um, uh, it, it, it's good to know that Twitter, in this case at least, is standing up for the, uh, for the free speech rights, for the ability of people to express themselves on Twitter, and is standing up to a government, an authoritarian thug uh, in government, trying to silence them and trying to shut down uh, the platform. Um, you know, this is, uh, this is a judge that has, of course, he couldn't do this, Without the support of President Lula, President Lula is a leftist authoritarian, uh, and um, you know they are basically censoring. They're censoring uh, opposition uh, in any way that they can. Brazil really hasn't had this level of censorship, this level of attempted censorship, at least since the military regime ruled. Um, uh, ruled uh, Brazil in starting in 1964 for 21 years, so from 64 until 85. Uh, and uh, Lula, Lula's really bad. I mean, I remember Lula, Lula this is his second round as president. He, the first time, he lost an election to Bolsonaro and then was put in jail, or maybe he was put in jail before he lost. Uh, before his successor lost to Bolsonaro. But I remember Lula being handcuffed and put, in, put into a police car and tried and put in jail. And then basically the Brazilian unbelievably corrupt Supreme Court uh, ruled that it was an illegitimate conviction and freed him from jail, which allowed him to run against Bolsonaro this last time, and he won. But Lula is about as corrupt as any, um, as any politician in the world out there uh, is. And the Brazilian Supreme Court 
I think has been for a long time, forever maybe, but suddenly today is a, a completely corrupt and, and worthless institution. Uh, one of the things that uh, this judge in the Supreme Court has done, and remember the judges in, in Brazil, like France, judges under the continental system, not the Anglo-Saxon system, but the continental system, judges have a lot of power. They are not just there to procedurally, you know, sit in trials and listen and, and, and uh, rule. They are activist judges. They actually are engaged in the cases. They, uh, they, their mission is to seek the truth, is to go out there and engage in discovery and engage in what actually happened. And, and they are semi-legislatures. They can actually um, uh, issue decrees and, and force companies and individuals to behave in particular ways. Um, Anyway, in, in this case, um, the judge, one of the things the judge has done, because Twitter has said no, Twitter refuses to cooperate, is that the judge has now frozen Starlink, Starlink, which is not related to Twitter, it's related to SpaceX, which happens to be an Elon Musk company, but it's not the same corporate entity at all. Anyway, he has frozen Starlink's finances and is preventing Starlink from conducting financial transactions in that country. Now, it turns out that about 250,000 Brazilians or, or uh, Brazilian institutions, Brazilians, use Starlink for their internet service. This includes the military, the Brazilian military. It also includes um, uh, schools. It includes a lot of people in the Amazons where there is no other infrastructure for getting internet, but Starlink, which is the connection with satellites, uh, satellite internet. Um, in the Amazon, the Starlink is providing um, internet service. Anyway, uh, uh, all of these are supposedly gonna be cut off, right? Because, um, because this guy is trying to get at Elon Musk. Uh, by the way, the feud has become personal, so Elon Musk keeps tweeting all kinds of memes and, and um, uh, calling this judge evil, which strikes me that he is. The judge is attacking Elon Musk personally, not just Twitter and X as a corporate entity. It's become very personal. So the judge is now going after the other asset that, or the other income stream that Elon Musk has in Brazil, which is uh, Starlink. So Starlink cannot, what this means is that Starlink now cannot charge its customers in Brazil because it, they've, they've cut off its financing, right? Because that's the only thing that they can do against Starlink. They can't cut the wires. They can confiscate the dishes, I guess, but then they'd have to go house by house and that would not be popular among Brazilians. They don't want to do that. So they basically do what a lot of authoritarians do, right? And what the American government does and what the Canadian government has done, right? They, they, they cut off your finances. And so what they've done is made it impossible for people to actually pay for the Starlink service. So Elon Musk, to his credit, has basically said, look, I, you know, it's, this is horrible that what the government is doing. Uh, he writes, many remote schools and hospitals depend on Star, SpaceX's Starlink. SpaceX will provide internet service to users in Brazil for free until this matter is resolved, as we cannot receive payment but don't want to cut anyone off. So again, uh, uh, Elon Musk is fighting back. I love this. I mean, this is the Elon Musk we all, I think, admire, should admire, uh, that, that, that uh, gains enormous amounts of respect. This is the heroic Elon Musk who, who you know, uh, stands up to political authority and political force. This is the Elon Musk that is heroic, that is the good guy. Uh, there's no uh, a question about that. Uh, it's... Um, I don't know exactly how this resolves. I guess the issue with Starlink it will be sued in the courts because uh, there's actually no basis for the government to go after Starlink. So I think they will go after it in the courts. But again, what happens when this is appealed to the Supreme Court and on the Supreme Court, there is a judge who actually issued the order. I don't know how that works in Brazil. Maybe I guess the other Supreme Court justices can override him. Would they? Um, 
the whole system is, again, I think the key word is corrupt. Uh, and uh, one can hope that what Musk is doing will maybe awaken the Brazilians. Because at the end of the day, the only way to facilitate any kind of real change in Brazil is going to happen from within Brazil. I mean, nobody's going to paratroop change into the Brazilian society and into Brazilian politics. What I'm hoping is Elon Musk standing up, Elon Musk uh, sticking a finger to this judge and to the Brazilian system and to Lula, the president, maybe will awaken that pro-liberty, pro-freedom spirit that I've seen in Brazil many, many times when I visited there that I think uh, exists in, in large measure in Brazil. Uh, and it's up to Brazilian people to awaken. It's, it's time for them to go out into the streets, as, they did, have they, as they've done many times over the last, what is it, 12, 15 years, and, and demand change. Uh, and demand that, that these bastards, I mean, they're going to lose, uh, they're going to lose Twitter. I think a lot of them, a, a lot of people in Brazil value Twitter. I know a lot of, I have a lot of following. If I look at my uh, um, followers on Twitter, uh, we have a significant, I have a significant number of them from Brazil. Uh, and hopefully they will demand Twitter, they'll demand Stalin gets connected again, and they will demand that this judge and ultimately this president um, get kicked out. The judge should definitely be kicked out. Uh, Lula, we might have to wait for another election. And part, part of this is I'm hoping that the Brazilians can resurrect kind of a spirit of freedom and liberty that predates Bolsonaro. Bolsonaro, as I've said many times on the show, I think corrupted that spirit. Uh, he, um, he, he refocused the energies on his mindless populist conservative agenda. Um, and there was a real energy behind people who really believed in freedom and liberty in Brazil. And maybe that can be resurrected. And maybe, maybe Elon Musk modeling what it's like to stand up to authority. Of course, he's doing it from the safety of being in the United States. Maybe that can stimulate the Brazilians into more action. And I'd say one other thing. Um, that plus the existence of Millet next door, uh, which poses this dramatic contrast to Lula. Lula is a committed socialist. Millet, a committed free marketer. Lula driving, um, uh, I think, Brazil into towards socialist authoritarianism. Lula driving, um, uh, Lula driving, uh, Lula driving them into socialist authoritarianism. Millet driving Argentina towards greater freedom, economic and and hopefully in other ways as well. So, I think that model it probably doesn't have much sway globally and internationally. But I think Millet has influence and sway when it comes to um, when it comes to South America. South America is relatively small. Everybody follows everybody else. I mean, it's big in terms of the population, but it's it's one geographic area. They don't share the same language because Brazil is Portuguese and everybody else is Spanish and everybody who speaks Spanish pretends they don't know Portuguese and the Portuguese pretend they can't understand Spanish. Even though if they make, made the effort, it's not, I think, I believe it's not that hard to figure the other language out. Uh, and and it, it, the cultures are different. But everybody follows it. And everybody follows everybody else's politics. And everybody's following Millet in Latin America. There's no question. When I was in Chile, what they wanted to talk about was Millet. And I'm sure knowing what's going on in Brazil, that everybody is following Millet. Let's hope that that serves as an inspiration so that the next time there's an election in Brazil, which unfortunately is still a few years away, uh, that uh, Millet's inspiration uh, carries the day. I don't know how you get rid of judges in Brazil. That's a good question. I don't know if it's by election or if they're appointed by the president or by Congress. Or what is the exact process by which this happens? But... Um, Let's hope this find, they'll find a way to get rid of this real evil judge and, and, and generally maybe to replace the Supreme Court's uh, Brazil with people who are more pro-freedom.